So I've just muscled my way into the workshop at the campground. And I didn't even ask, what was your name? Oh, Aaron. Aaron? Nice to meet you. <laughs> so Aaron is gonna, basically I'm talking about all the issues I have with my own caravan and basically trying to get as much advice as possible. <laughs> Mine actually stopped working. It works on electric, but it doesn't on gas. I've, I've been here 12 years, so um, oh, nice. it's uh, <laughs> something we've uh, worked on multiple times. Does this have the, oh, this one has the um, battery, so mine doesn't. Yes, if, if you're someone that do use the gas, um, if you're on sites without mains, mm. um, that is something a lot of people don't realise is that actually if they, if the sparker stops working, it is just a, an ordinary AA battery in there. <laughs> what other issues happen with this? Is it sometimes this part or? Um, this, the, yeah, this doesn't generally cause any problems. The um, that, that's for the gas side of things, so it yeah. detects the room temperature and adjusts the um, the gas flame. The um, electric side of it, uh, they quite often have this sensor here, um, not all of them do, but uh, occasionally the, the, the temperature side of the things on electric will fail. Mm. Um, it's not generally this that actually fails though, it is normally a problem with the circuit board at the back. Well, this one's not too bad actually, you can get from the uh, inside the wardrobe. If you, um, if you were to take this up here. Ah, oh, right. Um, quite often, um, if you, because normally you get this green light come on, mm. uh, nine times out of ten, if that green light doesn't come on and you've definitely got power at the fire, then it is the circuit board. A lot of people that are on a seasonal pitch, for example, and they use the electric and never use the gas, everything benefits from being used now and then. So I would say, um, just running the gas every now and then just to keep everything working would be um, a good idea. Okay, my next question is more to do with the aesthetics of the caravan. So because I live permanently in my caravan, it's it's starting to get a little bit of wear and tear on the, the fake wood edging, especially like around where my feet maybe hit it. Mm. So my question is, how would I fix the fake wood? I guess if it's like this, it's kind of like a, a, a plasticky, rubbery edging. In the UK at least, you can get hold of this from the manufacturer um, if you want to replace it. Um, if it's just shrunk, um, like it does sometimes it, when it gets hot, mm. um, what you generally can get away with that is just heating it up again and, and just stretching it a little bit. And then um, it will go back in and then you will have a gap at the bottom. Because I use a stove quite a lot, so some of the, the fake Wood's done to peel away and... You can get the actual vinyl. Oh yeah? Wood. Um, From the manufacturer again? Yeah, yeah. Um, we've, we've got a few rolls here for, for, for different vans. So you can sort of stick in a section if, if need be. Nice. If, it's, if it's not too bad, if it's literally just the edge has started to peel, um, we would stick it back down with a bit of uh, contact adhesive. Nice. Um, and that tends to pretty much go back to a factory finish then. Is there a cow I mean, in here? Oh yeah, we've got the petting zoo next door. So oh, okay. You get all sorts of noises. And then the next question, what do you do if you end up having a damaged floor? If you get a van that's a few years old and uh, obviously like here you've got the channel where everyone walks all the time, um, you might find that it'll start to sag a little bit uh, and it starts to feel a bit spongy. Um, that can be just through heavy use or sometimes through damp. If I just go through the heavy use option first, um, <laughs> that uh, we, we have a, a, a two-part adhesive stuff that uh, we could get hold of, which is essentially a bit like an epoxy glue. If we put it up on a ramp, we actually drill the floor and inject this glue in. Oh. And then uh, we come inside, put a little bit of board down and, and put a little bit of weight on it. And it'll actually set then, um, and it'll glue the, the, the two parts of the floor that have come apart it'll glue them back together um, and it'll be as good as new then. Really? Um, yeah. What are maybe some of the, the bigger issues you find coming through again and again with the older caravans? Yeah, the floor would be one, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, damp seems to be the, the, the one thing that uh, seems to curse all caravans at some point. I mean, catching, catching damp early is your best, best bet, really. Um, you may start to notice that um, the, the board on the walls will start to 
to sort of discolor you get a staining um, or um, they'll sort of start to, to pimple a lot of people don't realize that that's actually damp in the walls and it's starting to to, to make the wood um, I think it's actually the fungus that starts to grow and makes it bubble but mm. um, that, that's a telltale sign as well um, so getting it in early um, and, and solving the leak that has caused it um, you know will save you a lot of money in the long run um, you know board can be replaced but uh, the less it has to be replaced the better really because mm -hmm. when you start taking cupboards out and things it gets quite quite a big job so um, time consuming I and mean. time consuming yes mm -hmm. so you end up paying a lot of labor uh, uh, the other thing you, you get a few problems with um, sort of the chassis and that I guess um, over time if people don't get it serviced regularly the brakes can be out of adjustment and you know to actually tow the van can be quite uh, eventful I was going to say but uh, <laughs> you'll notice that uh, rather than braking smoothly for example it will um, sort of shut the car and that's because you know something's wrong <laughs> mm -hmm. it needs uh, either adjustment or um, you know the um, the hydraulic damper and the hitch maybe needs replacing these are some things I've never heard of before uh, so something in the hitch can we have a look so um, yeah in inside here you've obviously got the the main shaft that slides in and out as you as you brake with the car mm. um, but inside of that there is a hydraulic damper which depending on the, the weight of the van the size of the van without it obviously it would just sh sort of break quite harshly so it sort of slows the, the process down a little bit and just smooths it out mm. um, but if they go then there's, there's there's no resistance it just literally breaks harshly and it'll shunt the car you can actually extract it and then just replace it with oh, okay um, my indicator doesn't show uh, red or green anymore but it seems oh, right. to connect nicely still like I've had it checked by two people <laughs> yeah um, there's a couple of pads that go from the side in mm. there are also ones up and over oh yeah uh, or at the back and at the top okay um, which I believe this sort of gives you a rough idea on their wear as well okay um, it's not very often we replace those to be fair I um, mean it's normally the ones in the in the side yeah uh, which is, is indicated on the, the wear indicator on here. I mean, um, yeah, sometimes um, squeal can just be because it's, it's not been cleaned out recently. Try and uh, sort of rough up the shoes a little bit and get rid of the, the, the muck on them. And the same with the drums, really. Um, just to try and clean them up a bit. I mean, this is, um, this one probably hasn't been off for, for a while. It's um, got a bit of sort of rust and that built up on it. Sometimes you can get uh, with an older van, you might get a you know a stone or something gets stuck in there, um, and as it goes round, it will then chew up the shoe a bit. Okay, um, and then you need the the right yes. size. Yes, um, yeah. So every time we take these off, uh, they are a, a one-use not only, so we have to replace them when we're finished, mm. um, and they are torqued to quite a high torque as well. So. Um, oh, yeah. And, and maybe get them before you start. Uh, definitely get them before you start, yeah. <laughs> so a few of you might remember that I, I have problems with my with my fridge when it's running on gas. I mean depend does it does it actually try to, to light or what, what most of the happen? time yes. Yeah sometimes uh, the the actually <laughs> slightly distract. <laughs> yeah. The um, the burner itself uh, can can rust because um, you've obviously got the fridge vents on the outside, so yeah. it's um, almost outside, so it will will um, rust over time. If that happens, it, it, what error do you uh, Then, yeah, so then it might not spark across properly. Yeah, you tend to get a fault number nine on these fridges mm. if it fails to light, um, or it thinks it fails to light. So either, yeah, cleaning up the, the burner um, if it is rusty, sometimes actually just adjusting the um, spark electrode, uh, you know, how high it is. Um, can sometimes resolve it um, because on these the actual electrode also detects when the flame is there as well as being the spark so um, they have to be kind of precise if that doesn't work um, then unfortunately generally the problem is with the circuit board itself the CPU um, panel uh, uh, yeah there's because the, you've got this panel yeah and a circuit board at the back which oh, yeah. sort of actually does all the 
the main stuff. And which is the um, one that plays up normally, the one at the back? Uh, the one at the back, And yeah. that's quite expensive, isn't it? It is quite expensive, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the three common codes are 8, 9 and 10 with these, mm. which essentially is no mains, no gas, and no 12 volt if you're towing on the car. So if it's a number 8, I guess the first thing to check is that you've um, definitely got mains at the fridge, which some caravans, they, they have a socket in sort of an adjacent cupboard. Oh yes. I don't know if this one does or not, but um, sometimes it might just be worth checking that um, if it's a switch plug that it is actually on. With the gas, if it isn't, you know, the, the problems we were just discussing, then making sure that um, you know, the gas bottle's turned on and that the, um, the little red tap you have like these isolator taps in here. I don't know if you can. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, yep. That one there is actually oh, is turned on, yeah. But sometimes um, people forget that they get turned off. And then, yeah, with the number 10 volt, um, generally it's um, it could be that the, the plug for the car is a little bit corroded or it's, um, you know, damaged. Uh, another thing, perhaps some people don't realize as well, you need the car engine running most of the time for it to actually work so nice. that's probably the three common ones actually i thought of another question too i i know someone who started getting um soot lines up the caravan what do you do that could be again because the bun's got rusty and it's not actually then burning properly another thing that can <laughs> happen is that the actual uh sort of flu um can get just sort of general build up over time um, they do have a, a baffle in them, which um, is there to try and reduce that. But uh, sometimes you do just have to um, sort of take this little top section off and um, and run a uh, like a little bristly brush down through just to to clear it out. The actual burner's in in this sort of casing down the bottom. So you have to take uh, that out, which, take the casing off. Yeah, you, you just take these sort of um, bolts out there. Yeah. Um, in fact, no, there is on this one there is a flap which. Uh, can see oh, okay. um, if you flip it open you can see the flame if you're on a, a site with mains and you're running your fridge on electric but it's not getting cold so you, you have a, an element which gets hot and then it um, in turn makes the, the fluid and that go through the, the uh, cooling unit if um, if your element has failed and if you've got the vents off here if you just carefully <laughs> touch the uh, the metal channel here on the right if this hasn't got warm then the elements failed oh. if the elements <laughs> failed you've got to just get someone to change it for you if it is warm there and um, it's still not getting cold inside um, you can also just carefully check the cooling unit itself um, sometimes they do fail um, if it's um, really hot at this end um, but really cold this end uh, that is a sign that is probably the cooling unit which is gone. Um, so if it is cold the other end, it might be an indication that there's actually a blockage in there. In which case, unfortunately, it's probably a new fridge. <laughs> well, what do you think? What was the most helpful tip? Let me know in the comments below. And do you have any other, anything else with the caravans that you'd really like to know? Thank you. That's right, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>